Okay, I have an example of using Spring Boot with Oracle here. So there's a little bit of prep that we need to do for this. One is to get the Oracle database going. And I am actually running uh, Oracle 12C uh, via VirtualBox. And this is uh, it's something that you can download for free and utilize for your development. Let's see down here, and I do have uh, VirtualBox cooking. Oh, show you the right window. So here's the Oracle VM running in VirtualBox, which gives me a 12C database to work with. It's uh, kind of a, a convenient way to bring bring up Oracle on your local system for, for development. You can go over to the Oracle page, download that. Uh, you'll need to accept Oracle's licensing agreements, of course. It's a little beefy, but uh, they, they do recommend eight gig of memory. I'm not running that, I, I think I gave it two maybe four gig and it, it's up and running fine it's not something that you'd want to use for any type of uh, production type stuff but it is working for that so the source code for this example is going to be up on github under github slash spring framework guru and the repository name is spring dash boot dash oracle dash example so uh, on this i do have a readme here Another thing that we need to do for preparations is downloading the Oracle JDBC driver. And this is something that I had to go through to get the proper driver version installed. Here's the, if you Google a, the driver, you want this JDBC thin driver. Oracle offers a lot of options for the JDBC drivers. 95% uh, of the time, the light JDBC jar 7 is, it'll be just fine for what you need. But Oracle makes you go through all this so you can click on this thing here and say that you accept their license agreement. That is rather annoying, uh, Oracle Corporation, because the driver is not available in public Maven repos. So because Oracle wants you to accept their license agreement and click and then sign in and sign off that you are accepting Oracle's terms, you have to go through this. You can download it to your system and then install it. Now, if you are in a company where you are running your own Maven repository, such as Artifactory or possibly Nexus, you can upload this jar there and then your builds will function normally. That's what companies normally do. But if you're a private developer on your own, this Maven command here, you can download the jar, upload it to your local Maven repository, and then things will be happy for your project to build and run. So I'm gonna jump over to IntelliJ and start stepping through this. So the Oracle stuff that we need to set up, we need to set up on line five, the data source URL. And if you're gonna follow along exactly with me, localhost 1521 for the port and Oracle 12C for the SID, and the ORCL12C. So it's kind of hard to see there the, the L and the one look pretty similar, but that is uh, ORCL 12C for Oracle 12C. Now, I am using the account system, and any Oracle DBA watching this would probably freak, but that is the most powerful account in an Oracle database. I'm not setting up a service account. If this was a production application, I'd say definitely set up a, a service account and do not use what is the equivalent of a root account for a web application. That would be very bad. Uh, Oracle's got some outstanding security features, so I'm just taking a shortcut because I'm using this VM here and can trash it and do whatever I want to it. So system Oracle, the image downloaded from Oracle, all the passwords to do default to Oracle. And if you're an old Oracle guy, uh, like I am, it used to be system manager. So you'll see a lot of that out on Oracle instances, but Oracle has been changing that in the last few years. So in this case, it is system system Oracle for the password. And a couple of things here that we're, we're uh, keeping the connection alive. We are telling uh, Spring JPA to show SQL. And then we also have a create drop strategy for the database. And, and I just realized I had a, a bad naming strategy here, updating that on the fly here. These have changed. I stole it from another project, cutting and pasting in here. 
So the, these naming strategies, implicit and physical, have changed with Hibernate 5. So that what I had in there was old. This is now current. And we are using the Oracle 10G dialect for the Oracle. And this is what configures Hibernate to talk to Oracle's flavor of S SQL. So there is ANSI SQL out there. Everybody's a little bit different. So this is what configures Hibernate for that. So let's go ahead and step through this application now. So I will start up from the domain object. So we have an entity, JPA entity, persistence ID. Let me get rid of that. Go ahead and import that so we don't have that ugliness there. And then generation type of auto. So this is going to be managed by, by Hibernate. So Hibernate will be generating the ID value. So we have a pretty simple example here. So we have an ID description price for our using air quotes product. So a pretty simple example of a, a product. And what we want to do is set up a, a spring application for that. So we'll go up the food chain of this. So we are using spring data JPA. I am declaring a CRUD repository, which will give us CRUD operations right out of the bat. And I'm telling this to using Java generics to use product and long for the ID. And this sets things up so we can get Spring Data JPA to provide us an implementation. So I wanted to note if you're not, not used to Spring Data, by declaring the repository interface at runtime, Spring will provide us an, an instance of that uh, gets wired into our classes. So we just provide the interface, and then Spring Data will give us the uh, runtime for that. Now, I do wrap the repository up in a service. So I like to have a service layer that sits between the controller and the database layer. So uh, all the business logic should happen inside the service layer. It keeps your controllers very clean by doing this. And you can see that I have set up a variety of methods that we are going to use to support CRUD operations. So we have listing products, getting a specific product, deleting products. So this is all CRUD type operations that we can use with it. And you can also see that I have a converter object in this. So let's go take a look at that. So I have product and I have product form. So I have converters. I'm using the, the standard Spring Standard Converter class to convert one to the other. That gives you a, a nice spot where your logic is all self-contained in a single class. Good old single responsibility principle. Your classes should have one functional life. That's what makes the converter pattern uh, quite nice. And then Spring will manage the objects for us. So. Next thing, let's take a look at the controller. So I have a product controller, and this takes in my product service. And notice I'm using the interface and not the implementation. So if I want to set up unit test for this, it will go ahead and utilize that. And I'm not going to get into all the spring specific MVC mapping. So this is a typical spring controller. And you can see that for product or product list, I'm going to return back a list of products and uh, I have the ability to show a single product, edit, create a new product, and, and then here's my saver update. So this is what will accept a form post, and I'm expecting a product form to come in, and then I will persist that using the, the product service. And then finally, we have a delete action. So I can run, I guess, a delete URL, and then delete from that, and then it will delete and redirect to the list. And let's take a look at the templates. So that is the controller. I am using Timeleaf here. So we'll take a quick look at this. This is a Timeleaf template. You can see up here I de declared the XML namespace for Timeleaf using standard HTML5 here. I'm not going to get into a lot of the specifics of Timeleaf in here. I have a whole course on Timeleaf, so if you want to learn a lot more about Timeleaf, uh, go check out that course. But here I am listing out products, so I'll show you what's going on here. Line 19, the controller is going to return back a list of products, and then I will iterate through the, the list of products to render a table of products. So that's what's going on here. Product form, pretty similar, standard HTML stuff, but I'm, I'm using Timeleaf to show the product form. It will be empty if it's a new product, or it will be pre-populated if I'm editing. And then finally we have the, the show 
uh, HTML for Timeleaf, which will show a product ID, and we can see that Timeleaf here, this section of code here, would bind out the product ID to a value on the show display of the HTML. So let's go ahead and run this. I'm going to bring this up, and important to note that I do have Oracle running and the VM behind it, so it's going to come up and connect to Oracle, and because of the the way it's set up, it will create that product table on startup. So I'm going to come back over to Chrome, refresh this, have no products in the product list. So let's call this test one, get a price of 22, some URL. Now I'm not test, I'm not doing any validations here. It's pretty simple so I can see that product was created. So I'm going to go back here. This shows me the product list. Let's create a test two. And if I come back to the product list again, we can see that I have two products out there. I can come in and edit. And let's call them test 22 or 222. And I have things set up here, so down in the bottom, this is the Spring Boot out, output, and I am outputting the SQL, so when I hit Submit, you can see that the SQL was sent out to the council, and we can see that it was updated. And finally, let's go ahead and delete that second one. You can see he deleted, actually it was deleted, so this is being persisted to Oracle. Again, just to recap, all the source code is up on GitHub at slash spring framework guru slash spring dash boot dash oracle dash example. If you need an instance of Oracle, you can download the VirtualBox Oracle instance. Comes all pre-configured you know, right out of the box. You can get it working. And then the other annoying nuance about working with Oracle is you have to download and accept their license agreement. And if you forget the command to upload the Oracle JDBC drivers, here is the Maven command right here to install the Oracle jar on your local Maven repository. I hope that you found this uh, example of Oracle helpful. Uh, please leave a comment on this video if you did.